uh, disapproval of removing grey hairs it is from the, his father on the authority of his grandfather that the messenger of Allah said do not fuck out grey hairs no, no Muslim gets a grey hair in Islam except that it will be a light for him on the day of resurrection dyeing grey hair with henna cotton or other plants and the prohibition of dyeing them black rated that the prophet said the best thing to change these grey hairs is by henna and cotton in addition narrated that the messenger of Allah said the Jews and the Christians do not dye their beards so differ from them narrated that Abu Kuhafa was brought to the Prophet on the day of the conquering of Mecca and his beard was white from its grey hair the messenger of Allah then said change this colour but avoid black finally Ibn Abbas narrated that the messenger of Allah also said at the end of time there will be a people who will die with black dye black dye like the crops of those and they therefore will not smell the scent of paradise the etiquette of relieving oneself it is recommended for the one entertaining the bad thing to say in the name of Allah O oh Allah I seek refuge in you from the male and from and female devil this is based on the hadith from Ali who said that the prophet said the barrier between the eyes of the jinn and the private parts of humans when one of them enters the place to relieve oneself is by saying in the name of Allah additionally Anna stated when the prophet would enter the place to relieve himself he would say oh Allah I seek refuge in you from the male and female devils upon leaving the place it is recommended to say I seek your forgiveness when the prophet would leave from the place of relieving oneself he would say I seek your forgiveness it is also recommended to enter the place first with one's left foot and to step out first with one's right foot this is in keeping with the principle of be beginning noble things with their right and non noble acts acts with the left for which there is a general residence in open spaces such as the desert it is recommended to go such a distance that one is not seen we went with the messenger of Allah on a journey and whenever he wished to relieve himself he would go away until he could not be seen it is also recommended that one not raise in one's clothing, clothing not raise one clo one's clothing until one is close to the ground when the prophet wished to relieve himself he would not raise his garment until he was close to the ground it is not allowed to face or have one's back to the Qibla either while in the desert or in a building the Prophet said if you go to relieve yourself and do not face or put your back to the Qibla or, or upon urinating or defecting instead def defecating instead face the east or the west when we came to Asham, we found the bathrooms within the building facing the Qibla, so we would turn ourselves away and ask Allah for forgiveness. It is forbidden to relieve oneself in the path of the people or in the places of shade. Rated that the Prophet said, avoid the acts causing cursing. They asked, what are the acts causing cursing? Our messenger of Allah, he replied, it is the one who relieves himself in the path of the people or in the places of shade. 
It is dislike to urinate in one's battening place. Said, I met a man who accompanied the Prophet, like Abu Hurairah accompanied him, and he said the Messenger of Allah prohibited that that one should con or con our hair, con our hair daily, or that one or that one should urinate in his bathing place. It is forbidden to urinate in stagnant water. Narrated, narrated from the Messenger of Allah that he prohibited urinating in stagnant water. It is permissible to urinate while standing, but do, to do so sitting is preferred. I was with the Prophet and he went to the garbage dump, garbage dump of the people and urinated while standing. I moved away and he said, come closer. I came closer until I stood behind him and he then made a blush and wiped over his slippers. We, that we said that sitting is preferred because that was the Prophet's most common practice. In fact, even in fact, even said, if someone tells you that the Messenger of Allah urinated while standing, do not believe him. He would only urinate while sitting. This statement of hers does not negate what Hudayfa said, as she was reported what she had seen while Hudayfa narrated what he saw. It is known that one who affirms something takes precedence over one who negates an act, as the first has some addition, knowledge, knowledge. It is obligatory to keep clean of the urine, created that the Prophet passed by two graves, whose inhabitants were being punished. He said, they are being punished, but they are not, they are not being punished for a great matter. As for one of them, he did not keep himself clean of his urine, and as for the other, he used to spread tales among the people to cause harm. And the people should not hold his private pot with his right hand. The person should not hold his private pot with his right hand while urinating, nor should, be, nor should he clean it with his right hand that the Messenger of Allah said when one of you urinates he is not to hold his private part with his right hand and and he should also not clean his private part with his right hand. It is permissible to clean the private part with water, stone or similar items. However, to use water is best. Right, the Messenger of Allah would go to relieve himself and and I, I and a young boy would carry a leather water skin, a water and a spear, and he would wash his private part with water. With water. Right, that the Messenger of Allah said, if one of you goes to relieve himself, he should take him with, take with him three stones and clean himself with them as those will suffice him. It is not permissible to use less than three stones. Said It was said to him, Your prophet teaches you everything, even how to defecate. He replied, Certainly. He has prohibited us from, def from following the Qibla while defecating or urinate, urinating from cleaning the private part with the right hand from cleaning with less than three stones and from cleaning by using dung or a bung. It is not allowed to wipe with bones or dung. The Messenger of Allah prohibited wiping with a bone or dung. Containers and utensils. It is permissible to use all types of containers and utensils, save for gold and silver ones as it is specifically forbidden to use them for eating or drinking, while they may be used for other purposes. 
Do not drink from gold or silver containers and do not wear silk or brocade garments as they are for them for are for them in this world brocade garments as they are for them in this world and for you in the hereafter. As the message of Allah said, the one who drinks from a silver container only gargles into his stomach the fire of hell. However, another narrator in Muslim states that the one who eats or drinks from a silver or gold container, Muslim noted that what none of the narrators made any mention of eating or gold except in the narration. This addition information contradicts what has been narrated in a stronger form, although form. Although it is correct in its meaning, based on what can be derived from the Hadith, this is because eating and gold are greater and more serious issues than drinking and silver, is as is obvious.